Hello, welcome to Tweed's Garage where today I hope to finally get round to connecting up my DRO Z axis onto my Walco ZX15 milling machine. So join me and uh, we'll see if we can get it done. So this is my Walco ZX15 milling machine and um, I've had the uh, X and Y scales on it for, for a long time so I've been using them um, and I bought the uh, a little while about a couple of years later I bought the z-axis scale to go on but as you can see there's, there's not a lot of space to mount it and I started off having it this way and was thinking of putting a, a, cl a clamp with a bracket on down down the bottom of the spindle to uh, connect up to the slider on the encoder um, but it was just it would be hanging out too much and it's a little bit a little bit wobbly um, so the plan is to still make a uh, collar to go around here with, with some flat sides on and hopefully some bolt holes to bolt a plate to to uh, connect up to the to the uh, encoder on the side um, but I think what I might do is relocate the power switch box from the side to somewhere else on the machine um, because I think this is the only available sort of area to, to mount it on where it won't get in the way you know it's sort of uh, it's, uh, it's it's sort of sticking out a bit here it covers your speed feeds which isn't you know isn't desperate you can peer around the side and then on this side you've got your your down feed so there's just just no room to mount it um, and because the head swivels you know you can't mount it behind at the back so this is what we're going to attempt to do so I've got a bit of aluminium big enough to uh, bore out to make a clamp to go on the bottom of the spindle um, so off we go so the first thing to do is strip off the uh, encoder and bracket I made and the uh, power control box and leave that to one side. Um, might need to hook up out of the way because I might need to use the mill to um, do some of the procedures when I'm making this uh, bracket assembly up for the for the quill. So we'll, we'll dive right in. Could even be mounted on a plate back there out of the way underneath. Can't see a problem with that for clearance. Right, change of plan. I've tried to get this uh, DRO scale in around here somewhere. Um, it may have meant having to make a, a, an extended clamp for the quill here and then relocating this um, it can't go behind because the whole head moves like this so any any mechanical link between here and here is either going to have to be disconnected every time you move it or um, it's going to break um, but, so I've been waving this around uh, it can't go here because the handles in the way but I'll bring you around and show you uh, I think there's a space for it just at the back there's enough space to get this on an angle plate. I think sort of bit of angle iron, angle steel. Using these the mounting hole here and the mounting hole underneath with some longer through bolts, maybe some spacers just to go in, in there. In there. Um, and then if that's mounted snugly to this block there's enough space behind to get to the uh, nut for moving the moving the head if I ever need to move it and then there's plenty of space to get plenty of head space for this uh, this bar to be mounted up out of the way so it doesn't tangle down here there'll be a little bit of overhang um, and then just got to make 
some sort of clamp to go around the quill and then a bracket that will go behind like an L shape arm that will go around and up to move this along the bar. That's the plan. So oh, there you go, that's how you fit a Z-axis to a ZX15 milling machine. Um, as you saw in the video, there's, there's not a lot of space, um, but I'm really pleased with uh, how, how it all worked out in the end. I'll, um, I'll take you around and uh, sh show you closely so you can see how it went on. So here's the finished product. So the ring clamp is clamped on via uh, an Allen bolt running through this side and pulling up the, uh, the gap made by the slitting saw and as a secondary point of security this hole is drilled all the way through and tapped all the way through and there's a, a um, stainless steel grub screw that goes in first and tightens up against the uh, inner ring and then two allen bolts bolting on the aluminium angle that I milled out which has a little rebate at the back for this aluminium angle to sit on it was a sort of thinnest strongest bit of material to do the job to run up the back of the uh, gearbox for the uh, spindle adjustment and as you can see there's not a lot of room that that grub screw just just clears top and bottom
and you can't see any of them. But yeah, it moves nicely. Um, to make sure it was all parallel, uh, moved the quill up and down and made sure it followed the line of this of, of this piece of angle plate. And that was adjusted by the uh, slots in the encoder that allow you to move it side to side to get that just running parallel. And then this uh, single bolt with the uh, locating pin down here works really well. It's, it's solid, it's, it doesn't go anywhere. Um, and then this, as you saw, is long enough to go all the way through to, to hold, you know, replace the uh, Allen bolt that was in there before. Um, and then because this button's here, uh, there's room for the original Allen bolt to go in behind as it did originally. So, mission accomplished. Z-axis fitted to the ZX-15 milling machine. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video or found it useful, especially if yourself is look, trying to find a way to uh, fit a Z-axis to a small milling machine like this. Because I know they sort of, there's quite a lot crammed in the head, there's a lot of movement and not a lot of space to uh, put, put a Z-axis on. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and uh, subscribe because there, there will be more video content along of projects in the workshop and, uh, and, and overviews of some of the vehicles that I have. All right, see you next time. Bye.